So hello everyone and welcome back to our series of Applied Advanced Calculus weekly videos, also known as ENGR 233. My name is Nathaniel Pusisorski and this is week 2. So today we're going to be looking at partial derivatives and later on at directional derivatives. So for partial derivatives, the trick is you want to do something I like to call the tree. So you're going to generally have a function, let's say in terms of x and y's, and then you're going to be given x and y in terms of u's and v's. And they're going to ask you to find di f over di u, or di f over di v. So what you want to do is you want to draw this tree and break it down, because you're gonna, you know that by looking at this tree, if you're asked to find di f over di u, you could simply take the branch from f to x and then the branch from x to u since the top what you're looking for is f and the bottom what you're looking for is u. You're also going to do the same thing on the right, di f over di y and then di y over di u. And then what you want to do is you want to multiply the dies over here. So for example, to get di f, so for example, to get di f over di u on the left hand side, we had to do di f over di x times di x over di u, as we circled over here. Then we're going to add it to what we have on the right hand side, which is di f over di y times di y over di u. This might seem a little complicated, but let's look at an example. So over here we have a is equal to 2u plus 3v squared. And then we're given u is equal to y sine x and v is equal to y e to the x. So as we could see, our a that we have over here is given in terms of u's and v's. And our u's and v's are given in terms of y's and x. So we're going to write down our a as the top of the tree. Then it branches down into u's and v's. And then the u's and v's branch down into y's and x's. And what are we looking for? We're looking for di a over di x. So we're simply going to circle the side that passes by a and x on the left and on the right. So we're left with two things. Di a over di u times di u over di x and di a over di v times di v over di x. The addition of both of these things gives di a over di x, as we wrote over here. Now whenever we say di, we're talking derivatives. So when we say di a over di u, well it's the derivative of a with respect to u. So if we do the derivative of a with respect to u, we're going to get rid of the 2 as the exponent by bringing it downwards, times 2u plus 3v, then times the inner derivative with respect to u, which is just going to be 2. We can then apply the same idea for di a over di v, which is simply the derivative of a with respect to v. And it's going to give us 2 times 2u plus 3v times 3. We then want to do di u over di x and di v over di x, which is going to give us y cos x and y e to the x respectively. Finally, we know that di a over di x is di a over di u times di u over di x plus di a over di v times di v over di x. We found everything we need and all we have left to do is to plug and play. Also, a very important point is not to forget to plug in our u's and v's in terms of x and y's. Those were given at the beginning of the question over here.
So as our final answer, we can't just leave it in U's and V's. We're going to plug in the U and V values as they were given at the beginning in X and Y's. And then we're done. That is partial derivatives. Now let's move on to directional derivatives. A directional derivative, generally how it's going to be given, is you're going to be given a function in terms of X and Y's. And they're going to tell you, find the directional derivative of this function. You're either going to be given an angle, or you're going to be given two points, A and B. To find the directional derivative, what you want to do is first you want to calculate the gradient. The gradient is this little upside down triangle we have over here. The gradient is a vector whose x component is the derivative of f with respect to x, whose y component is the derivative of f with respect to y, and whose z component is the derivative of f with respect to z. Now, of course, if we're working in x and y, we won't have a z component over here. Then, it's very important to realize that the gradient is always a vector. Finally, to calculate the directional derivative, we're going to have to do the gradient times a u. u is our unit vector. The unit vector could be found two ways. If we are given an angle, we simply plug in cos of that angle as the x component of the unit vector, and sine of that angle as the y component of the unit vector. If we are given two points, a and b, well, we, all we have to do is to find the vector of those two points, the magnitude of that vector, and simply divide the vector by that magnitude. And that's going to give us our unit vector u. So to I'll see all of this as an example, let's look at this. We have a function 3x squared plus 4y squared. The gradient of that function is going to be the derivative of f with respect to x as the x component of the vector and the derivative of f with respect to y as the y component of the vector. That gives us 6x as the x component and 8y for the y component. If we then plug in the point 1, 2 that was given to us at the beginning, we get a vector 6 and 16. Then, we want to find our unit vector. We are given an angle of pi. Thus, the unit vector is going to be cos of pi for the x component and sine of pi for the y component, which is simply minus 1 and 0. Finally, to find the directional derivative, we are going to do the dot product of the first vector we found to be 6 and 16 times the unit vector to be minus 1 and 0. If we do the dot product, we get a final answer of minus 6. And that's how we find directional derivatives. So I hope this was helpful. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.